in this final video about uh, how to use a monitoring system uh, for a PV plant, we want to uh, have a look at the identification of malfunctions, uh, how to use the diagrams um, to get closer or to get a closer idea, a better idea uh, what the reason might be why we have a yield loss. So first diagram we have to look at is the diagram creator. In this case, this uh, monitoring uh, system provides you this um, this type of diagram creator, so you can um, use this diagram creator to set up your own diagram, uh, which gives you more opportunities to um, put data together. Uh, we have two axes, left axis, right axis. You can choose again the time period, so the day, week, uh, month, etc. So let's have a look at the 7th of, of June. And then we have a look, you see all the uh, data. We have sensor data um, and then data coming from the inverters. Uh, you see current AC, you have the different phases. There are a lot of data which not all are filled with values as it, it depends on the inverter if these uh, values are available. Um, so what we can do is let's make a quick example. Uh, we take uh, the energy generated per interval um, and say, okay, we want all three inverters. So check all inverters, uh, reload this diagram. And then you see that's the, um, the energy over time of each inverter. And at the bottom, you see the ta data table um, with the beginning of the power generation in the morning at half past five. Um, so uh, that's a diagram we already know with the three inverters. And now what you can add is uh, you can select, okay, I want uh, the irradiance. Um, in this case, we have to select this value, the uh, irradiance of, uh, of the system, um, reload the diagram. And then you see, um, unfortunately, you see the colors, this uh, red color represents the irradiance. Um, so we can highlight this by just selecting this value. So that is the irradiance with the values on the second or on the right hand axis. And then we have the energy generated by the three inverters. And you see, of course, the slope or the characteristics of these curves run synchronously, of course, um, yeah, and you can use this, uh, this uh, diagram creator uh, to set up your own diagrams. You can also, again, export this, this data. You can see here in this table to do a deep analysis. And um, yeah, this, this diagram helps you, uh, or this diagram creator helps you to get a very close look at the, the, the data to do an analysis in case of any more function. And what we'll do in this video is we'll uh, have a look at uh, different examples um, with the um, no functions or failures of this PV system uh, and how to understand how to uh, understand where these uh, malfunctions come from and how to identify them. The first example we want to have a look at is the energy generation on the 16th uh, December 2018. So let's step over to the 18 December um, 16. So uh, we've already seen this. This um, we've talked about this issue. You see that there's a very uh, small power value. The irradiance is rather small. So the question is, well, what is the reason for this? Um, is there any technical issue? Um, if you go to the next day, 17th of, of December, you see uh, the power was zero. Uh, so the, with the daylight 10 uh, until uh, 11 a.m. So the power is zero. You see the irradiance is very small, just uh, 32 watts per square meter. So heavy clouds. And of course, this um, the reason why we don't get any power generation is due to the coverage of snow of our PV modules. And you see here in the uh, close to noon, uh, the PV system start, begins to, to generate power on a very small level. And if you go back, uh, on, go to the next step, 18th um, of December, you see this, uh, the power is on a um, expectable level. 
so everything's fine. There is no technical issue. Um, so during winter time, of course, you have to be cautious um, to mix uh, technical failure with the coverage of snow. So you should use uh, data, weather data uh, from a weather station to get to know if there has there been any snowfall and might there be any uh, coverage of our PV modules. So that's one issue, of course, you have to keep in mind in uh, during winter time. The next example I want to have a look at is what has happened on the 11th of uh, June. Uh, I've also talked about this uh, um, condition in the previous video. Um, so think about if you don't have any radiant sensor, if you don't have uh, the power, uh, power measurement or data of the power which is generated by the PV system, uh, then you cannot decide whether there's an outage or technical issue or this is coming due to um, severe weather conditions. Uh, in this case, we have had a heavy thunderstorm. Um, so you see, just you can't rely just on the power generation curve. Um, so you can't decide what has happened here at uh, 3.45. Uh, if you have also the irradiance data, um, you can be sure, you can see okay there's a significant drop of the irradiance due to heavy clouds, heavy rains, uh, thunderstorm, and then you can understand why the power generation from uh, uh, 135 um, uh, 45 until uh, let's say quarter to 3 p.m. has been close to zero. There was no sunshine, no radiance, so the PV system wasn't be able to generate electricity due to the heavy clouds. So that's the reason why you should always need to have access to irradiance data, uh, of course measured uh, on site by a parameter or a crystalline cell sensor. Um, you need to know what are the uh, irradiance conditions on site to um, evaluate uh, the power generation of the PV system. We have seen in a previous video that there has been a power generation issue in 2015. So what we can do now is we want to have a look at what might be the reason uh, why the yield production was significantly smaller in 2015. So let's have a look. We want to see the uh, energy produced and the radiation in each year you see the red bar is significantly smaller compared to the previous years or the years 2016 to 2019 so let's have a look at what has happened in 2015 so we go to the uh, annual view select the year and you see oh there's there's something happened in july this red bar is significantly smaller of course, also this red bar compared to the yellow one in September and October is not correct. So there's also something wrong. Um, so what might be uh, the reason? Um, so first of all, we want to have a look at the situation in July. So let's select uh, 2015 July first. And then you see uh, the reason, okay, we have just yellow bars, the radiation data uh, from the 1st to the 27th of July 2015 and then to the, um, the 28th we see the, that there's a red bar. If you go back to June you see oh there has something happened uh, 26th of June 2015 everything seems to be fine and then we don't have any um, data or energy which has been generated. Um, so let's let's have a closer look what might be the reason. So what has happened on the 27th of June? Uh, so June 26, everything's fine. You see this red and the yellow curve, everything's fine. Let's get over to the next step. You see uh, power curve is zero. So we get data um, from the radiation sensor, but we don't have any power uh, which has been generated. And then if you go further, you see uh, we, we don't have a red line, just radiation information. So the system is on the one hand 
offline, so there is no power generation, or the other reason might be that we don't get any uh, data from the inverters that the power curve can be calculated by this monitoring system. And if you go back to uh, July the 27th, 10 to 8, so just have a look what has happened here. Um, so we have the July uh, 25th, everything just, we don't have any power, 26, uh, no, just irradiance, and 27 and 28, you see that there, there data is missing. So someone has worked on office on, obviously on the system. There are no values in this period from 11.40 to uh, 1 p.m. 05. And then you see the power generation begins at 2.10. Um, so someone has worked on the system. You see there is no power curve uh, in the morning. So there has been happened something. And now you can have a look, um, for example, at the AC power on this day. Can you can we identify what has happened? You see uh, the inverters provide data, just two of them. Uh, inverter number three is missing. No measured values available. So there, there's data missing uh, of this inverter. And if you go back, you see there are no inverted data. So there is no information. If you step over to the weekly view, you see there are no data. The inverters haven't provided data. So that's important. Um, so we can go back uh, in this time period. We don't have any data. So the system cannot calculate the power. It might be that the system is feeding in. We don't have energy meter readings uh, directly from the energy meter. We, the power, which is shown in red, is just provided by the calculation of the energy values of the inverters. So we can't decide whether the, there is no data communication or the system is offline. So in case of this, you need to send a technician uh, on site and check if the system is feeding in or if there is a total outage of the system. Um, in this case, you have to uh, act very fast if the system is feeding in and you don't get data. So there's a data communication problem. You need to fix it um, as soon as possible, but you do not need to uh, react within within hours. Uh, you can can have a closer look at the uh, at the problem. In the final example, we want to have a look at the situation of an uh, AC power job of one inverter. So what we do is we hop to the uh, 13th of March, 2016. So let's have a look at the daily view on the 29th of March, 2016. You see everything is fine with a cloudy day in spring with all these ups and downs due to uh, clouds. Um, you see the yellow and the uh, blue inverter number two, number three running synchronously and then inverter number uh, one, the green one, uh, with the, just one third of the power of uh, inverter number two and three. So everything is fine. And if you go to the next day, you see in the morning there's a drop of the power of inverter number uh, two. So if you have a closer look, you see uh, this uh, yellow curve drops in the morning at uh, 9.35. Uh, so something has has happened and we want to identify the reason for this drop and what you can see is that uh, inverter number two the yellow one is running on the level of the green one so he has just one third of the expected uh, power uh, you can also uh, see this in this uh, ac power normalized diagram uh, the ac power is now normalized to the uh, installed capacity and you see in yellow uh, the uh, yellow inverter runs on just one third of the expected AC power. So the question is, what is the what might be the reason, and um, what, what we can do in this case is we can uh, step over to a clear sky day um, because these days are very helpful or are better for the data analysis. These cloudy days. Uh, are not that or you aren't able to identify all issues as the power and the radiations are changing very fast so you 
should switch over to uh, Clear Sky Day. And in this period, we have a Clear Sky Day on the 20th of April. You see in this uh, AC power diagram um, three curves. The yellow curve has just one third of the expected uh, uh, power. You see we are at 0.35 kilowatt per kilowatt peak installed capacity. The green and the blue one are running on a higher level. Everything is fine. Uh, again, the step to the AC power diagram shows you um, something has changed. The, the yellow curve is just on the level of the green one, although the yellow inverter has three times the power of the, um, uh, of the uh, green one. Uh, what we can also see is we will have a look at this uh, later on is that this uh, the blue curve is flattened uh, from uh, half past 12 uh, to uh, a quarter past uh, two uh, so we will have a look at this uh, later on first of all let's identify the reason why we have uh, this drop of power of this uh, yellow inverter so first of all we'll have a look at the dc current of our inverters um, and see what's what's happening there. Um, we see it two um, uh, two curves or two different characteristics. On the one hand, the, the blue one. Um, you see, the blue one is running on a higher level and a lower level. Uh, that's fine. Uh, we know the inverters have two inputs. Uh, they have two MPP trackers uh, with the different configurations. So. so uh, we have uh, three strings in, in parallel at input number uh, one and one string uh, in, connected to input number two. Uh, and we have the same situation for inverter number two, so the yellow one, but that does not fit. Um, you can also identify this issue if you have a look at the DC current uh, normalized diagram. You can see that uh, this uh, straight line uh, is smaller than, than the expected one. In this case, you see that the DC current is divided by the IMPP and this part, uh, string number one, so input number one or input number A of the inverter, shows a significant smaller uh, current than expected. We'll have a look at these uh, ripples or this uh, change of the current um, of inverter number two uh, in a minute. Um, first of all, let's let's identify this this issue. So we see that the current has dropped off uh, this inverter. So um, there might be an issue with the, with the modules. We have we can also have a look at the DC voltage. Let's directly switch over to the normalized DC voltage. You see everything is fine. All curves are on the same level. You see again this dashed line uh, of the inverter number three. We'll have a look at later on. But you see there's no issue regarding uh, the each module string so the voltage shows you the number of modules per string so there is no obviously no change what you could do is now you can stop forward and um, backward in time to have a look what has changed but you see here everything's fine so there might be an issue regarding um, the number of strings which are connected to inversion number two so let's get back to a dc current normalized um, so that's the question. What has happened here? Um, it's obvious that uh, we have lost uh, two thirds of our uh, modules. So we have, under normal conditions, uh, this yellow curve, uh, the straight yellow curve, should be on the level of this straight blue curve because uh, we have three strings connected to input A or input number one, uh, and. The reason might be in this case uh, that one uh, cable, uh, one string cable is broken and that uh, two of the three strings uh, aren't uh, connected uh, to the inverter anymore, so that, that we get just uh, this current of one string instead of three strings. Um, and now you need to send a technician on site who has to check this uh, on site to identify uh, the broken cable. Um, and to fix this issue, uh, to, uh, to get the current back, because at the moment we are losing 66% of the power of this inverter um, as long as this uh, malfunction isn't fixed. And the last issue we want to have a look at is what might be the reason why do we see this um, 
change of the DC current of uh, inverter number three, second uh, input. So we lose current. So what might be the reason? Uh, and if we step over to the DC voltage, uh, for example, uh, what you see is there is a slight increase in the DC voltage of this uh, of this inverter. So we can have a closer look at this. Um, so you see, if you compare the both uh, both inputs of inverter number two and three, there's a slight change. You can get a better look if you have used the DC voltage normalized diagram, because then you can zoom in. The voltage is now divided by the UMPP of our modules. Um, we've seen this uh, in the previous video and have had a, have had a look at this. Uh, how to use this information to derive uh, the number of modules within one string. And if you compare this, you see there is a change in the DC voltage. So the question is, what might be the reason or what can we observe? And finally, we can also have a look at the AC power. And what you see here is that the curve is flattened. So uh, what you expect is that the curve should rise to higher values and then drop. Um, but Obviously, there's a there's a cut off of this of this power, and that's the the, the issue. Uh, the inverter reaches its uh, maximum uh, capacity. Uh, he isn't able to uh, generate more uh, power, um, so he cuts off and uh, steps over to a uh, to the maximum uh, transformation of AC to DC power. This leads to a change in the DC current and uh, DC voltage. So he can't uh, uh, find the maximum power point anymore of the PV generators. Uh, what you can also do is you can have a look at uh, the status of this inverter. Uh, you can find this information in this diagram creator uh, section. So what you finally want to do is, is there any error? Uh, so let's have a look if we have an error status of our inverter. Um, you see everything's fine. So in this case, uh, the error code is zero. This means there is no uh, issue. Everything is fine. Um, what you can also do is you can, of course, check the status of this inverter. Um, so, so deselect error and select status in this uh, selection. And if we reload the diagram, you see we have the uh, status of seven so that's uh, starting operation doing some previous tests so pre mpp operation and then we have the status of uh, status id one that means that the inverter is in an mpp status so everything's fine so that is not a technical issue the inverter runs normally um, in this period from uh, 12 until 2 p.m um, but uh, it reaches its maximum and um, this gives us just a hint that the, uh, the inverter reaches the, the maximum power he can transform to AC power. What you can also see is here in version number two uh, doesn't show any status message, so he's running on the uh, on MPP operation uh, status. Um, although one or oh, just one string is, is running on input number A, and two strings are missing, as we've identified this. Um, issue but uh, from the point of view of the inverter everything is fine um, he has no um, technical issue uh, itself so you see um, what what monitoring systems can do for you uh, what data you can can derive you can analyze uh, to get a very deep view into the pv system of course you the more data the more accurate the data are the more information you can get the better and um, then in case of any issue regarding a more function shading for example etc um, you can uh, you can analyze the problem and uh, identify if this is a technical issue that you need to set a technician on site or this or if this is an issue you can't fix like shading for example due to obstacles uh, so you have to handle this uh, without um, being able to solve this problem. So that's the um, the, the idea of using um, these uh, monitoring systems um, to have a deep view into your PV system.